Bitso Harley said, Hey man, can you make a tutorial on how to do this effect because I'm trying to implement it in Godot without success. I tried to use this tutorial but it didn't work out very well. Alright, I had a look at the tutorial and it led me to Heartbeat's squishy player tutorial in GameMaker. I've handled Squash and Stretch a little differently but I have used his Godot platformer tutorial to quickly set up a basic platformer. Big thanks to Heartbeat for the code to get this example up and running. You can find links and the source code in the description below. If I move the player around, you can see that they don't have a set squash animation when they land. The harder they hit the ground, the stronger the squash effect. Before diving into the code, it's important we set our player up correctly. The sprite of the player should have an offset such that the origin is at the bottom of the sprite. This is important because scaling the sprite is in relation to this point. Let's go over the player code. Most of this code is from Heartbeast tutorial, so I won't go over it here. The only thing I've added here are variables that store the previous motion and if the player has just hit the ground. We'll use these later. First, if the player is not on the floor, they're in the air. During this, the shape of the sprite will be determined by the player's Y speed. We'll be using the range lerp function for this. It's a lovely little tool that allows the mapping of one value to another within a given range. The abs function just returns a positive number if the input is negative. We use this because we're not interested in the direction, only the vertical speed. The first set of values represent the minimum and maximum we expect the vertical speed to be. The second set of values represent the range of what can be returned. For example, if the y speed is 0, the function will return 0.75. If the y speed is the maximum jump height, the function will return 1.75. So, if the y speed is anything between 0 and the maximum jump height, the function will return some value between 0.75 and 1.75. If the player is on the floor, but hasn't hit the ground yet, the player has only just hit the ground. We do a similar trick here, but this time we dramatically increase the X scale if the previous vertical speed is high. After all, we want the player to squash horizontally when they hit the ground. We set hit the floor to true to prevent this code from running again. The final few lines smoothly move the scale to the default value of 1. I invite you to check out the article linked in the description that explains this function a bit more. It's for the Construct game engine, but the points made are also relevant to Godot, as well as some other engines. And that's it! Thanks for watching, I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to like or dislike the video, and if you have any other questions, please comment below. Cheers! Also subscribe!